Good morning. Welcome, Brownsville Church. It's Palm Sunday, and we're happy you're here. Yes, welcome. Happy Palm Sunday, Elizabeth. Oh, I go. I'm Elizabeth. <laughs> I'm the kids' pastor here. Yes, I'm Emily. I'm the women's pastor. We are glad you are joining us here on Palm Sunday. Now, I do miss all those kids with the palms. I know. Do you remember, as a kid, somebody gave me a palm branch, <laughs> and we were walking down the aisle. I don't know whose bright idea that was because I was just whacking everybody as I was going down. Oh my goodness. Because it was too funny, but I was a PK. The rules just didn't apply to me. Yeah, so. in kids church we have three rules. <laughs> respect yourself, respect others, and respect the building. And I think you just broke all three, so you'd be out. Yeah, but I'm a PK, so, so you got away. Okay. <laughs> well, countdown is happening in just 10 minutes. So we were actually in the lobby just over here but they are doing their worship practice and it is so loud and so great. We couldn't even hear ourselves. So we were like, you know what, let's come out here, but we just miss seeing you guys and we miss being here in person. So hang out with us and um, grab some popcorn and get yeah, comfortable. Yeah, get a snack. <laughs> Speaking of food, <laughs> I am a big foodie. Did you know that some people call me the female Gordon Ramsay? Who calls you that? my family because I make them <laughs> but in all reality I do I love to cook and I yeah. make them call me that or they don't eat no I'm just kidding yeah but but you do make them say thank you I, I do of that. course we yes <laughs> we pray we thank Jesus and then yeah. we thank mom for yep. making the food but it is getting so difficult to find groceries yeah so what do we do tell them what they want Elizabeth super exciting actually um, and we got a chance to help this week our church is doing food giveaway on Wednesdays and Saturday mornings so mm -hmm. come to the church abundance of food yes. I think one day we had 7,000 pounds of food that we were there and it yes. is um, meat produce dry goods like all the things and yeah. it is so much food so if you are in need please don't go and need come yeah come. don't We've go got lots hungry of for sure yes every wednesday and saturday and we are staying safe yeah we really are i mean we're making sure the numbers are down to 10 we're keeping people six feet apart as well um, making sure that we have all the protective gear <laughs> yes if you come and volunteer we will give you this beautiful accessory free of charge it looks great with your outfit mm -hmm. yeah there you go also gloves and also i want to make sure i mention farm share that's happening this saturday as well yes. so if you're coming to that um stay safe but you can come and yeah, definitely come get, get some food please yeah. it's gonna be so great well the countdown is still going it's still clicking but don't <laughs> touch that dial because we are coming up live with our service yeah. in just a few minutes so you have a chance to grab your Bible grab a coffee mm -hmm. change into your Sunday best PJs Yes, we want to see your Sunday best. So tag us in your no, Sunday best PJs. Don't tag us. I don't want to see. I don't want to see my mom's PJs. Yeah, mom, tag me. You can tag Elizabeth Madero. You find me on Facebook, and oh, I'd love no. to see. That's crazy. Well, speaking of sharing, <laughs> why should we? What other, what other reason should we be sharing and tagging this service? Yeah, really cool. Um, and really exciting, we have bike giveaways happening really soon. Next Sunday for Easter Sunday, we're giving away bikes. And if you wanna be entered in, share this service on your Facebook. You can also tag someone that you think would really be blessed by the service, Palm Sunday. Yes. Tag their name down below and your name will be entered in for a um, kid's bike, a yes. fifth grade and under bike, elementary size bike. Kid's bike, because I yeah. checked and they're not for grownups. No. But we do have they're like 20 kids. and we're gonna give them away on Easter Sunday, so. All right. But I feel left out. I mean, I feel like the grown-ups, I mean, we do all the work anyways yeah. for these Easter egg hunts. What do we get? We should okay. get something for free. What do we get? Tell them what we get, Elizabeth. All right, so next Sunday, Easter Sunday, we're having a drive-in Easter service, and we'll be doing grown-up Easter baskets there for you. So come next Sunday. We're gonna practice social distancing our first time ever for an Easter Sunday morning service right here in this parking lot. You come, we're gonna tell you what um, FM station to put your station to. We'll have speakers, we're gonna have worship, we're gonna have a word and yeah. bike giveaways and grown up Easter baskets. Yes, so. we are gonna give away the bikes on the Easter Sunday drive-in service. So you gotta come, make some room so there's no junk in your trunk so you can put the bike in your car if you are, if you won. Also Easter baskets, I'm excited yeah. about that. Uh, I'm excited. I am so <laughs> excited. excited. Yeah. It's gonna be excellent <laughs> because some bunny is gonna win oh. on the Easter basket. And we're gonna put, some really amazing things in those Easter baskets. Yeah. I thought it would be amazing to put in hand sanitizer and toilet paper if we can find it. Yeah. And just other essentials things that you need. 
Yes. Like chocolate. Yes. We need chocolate. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> totally. Yes, chocolate. We should definitely put chocolate in there. So it's going to be a Sunday that you will not want to miss. It's going to be awesome. Well, what are we doing during the week to stay busy? I mean, we're constantly trying to figure things out to do and uh, you know, we're trying to see what's open and nothing really. So how are you guys staying busy? I mean, what are you well, guys doing? I decided to jump on the gardening bandwagon this week. My sister Ooh. did it last week. My mom is an avid gardener and so we planted herbs and peppermint and oregano and peppers and tomatoes, all the things. So I'm trying that. to figure all that out. So we'll see how it goes. I may let you know next week how my garden's going if I kept everything alive. <laughs> but um, we're also I trying to stay that. connected just as a church family and we miss you guys. We miss being connected. So during the service, make sure you comment. We're, we worked out a lot of our tech issues from last week. So we'll both be able to connect with you during the service. So we'll be on live chatting with yes. you. Um, but also Wednesday night, pastor has a word. It's called Wednesdays in the word. So you can catch it on replay or you can watch it live at seven o'clock on Facebook or on our site, brownsville.church. Um, yeah. So if you're bored yeah. on Wednesday and you want to get, or you want to get more plugged into <laughs> the word, filled in. Yeah. Uh, we are still doing things here. Stuff yeah. is happening. We're Definitely. doing stuff. It is. I mean, we're busy now more than ever. So we've got yeah. Wednesday in the word and then Friday is oh, yeah. good Friday yeah. service. So we are still going to do that. We're still going to remember that very important day about what Christ did for us. And it's going to be a communion yeah. good Friday. Yeah. So, but if you don't have anything to take communion with, we suggest apple juice or some pretzels, some yeah. type of juice, some type of bread so that you can all partake, partake in yeah. communion together so we can remember that. And that's going to be on Friday, this Friday at yeah. 7 o'clock. And we're going to do that live here as well. So that's going to be really exciting. So our countdown is still happening. We're almost ready. So we're going to have to run in in just a second. But um, we just have a few more minutes left. Yes. Yep. We are live streaming. You can watch us here on Facebook. You can watch us on our website, www.brownsville.church. And it will be there. You can comment. Please tell us what you are thinking, uh, you know, your amens and your hallelujahs. We want to hear it all. We want it all. Yeah. And we've got our guest, uh, Lumen May is going to be here. Commissioner Lumen. Cool. Is he right? <laughs> He will be here He's and here. it is going to be It's going to be good. I know. So um, I know we chatted a little bit of, uh, ago, but if you're just tuning in now, how can people engage during the service, Em? Yes, please. You can engage with uh, responding with your comments. You can stand up and worship and sing at the top yeah. of your lungs because you won't have that person behind you. You know, ooh, she can't sing. No one's going to hear you. You belt it out. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. You want to get your Bible and follow along in the word and just really act as if we are all here together because that's yeah. important. We just want you to stay connected with us and be a part of the service. We want you to feel included in our service. I know I've had some ask me, how can you still give? And you can by going to brownsville.church slash give. And yes. um, I know you can text too. What's that number text that we text? Text to give, 850-417. 7345. Again, that's how I text to give. You just, you literally just text a number, an amount that you want to give, and it just does it. Yeah. Lickety split. <laughs> it's super easy. But we are also taking checks uh, through the mail. USPS yeah. is still running. So until they. What'd you call it last week? Old school? Old, old school. school. <laughs> you can send it in the mail. Yeah, snail no. mail. Yeah. Um, but if you want to just stay home yes. and just do it from the computer yeah. or your phone, you can do that too. Yes, you can absolutely do that. So you can send it uh, to Brownsville. Our address is located on our website. Yeah. Uh, just make the checks out to bag. B which is Brownsville Assembly of God. Really simple. Really, really classy. Easy. Oh yeah, <laughs> super classy. Bag. I know. Bag it. Well, we're still counting down, <laughs> but I just want to remind you that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I know that these are trying times. I know that we haven't been through this before, but we're all going through this together. And I know it's challenging and I know it's stressful, but it's helpful to know that you're not alone. Yes. So we're here for you and we'll be here for you during the service and just stay connected, guys. We love you and we'll see you in a few minutes. Bye.
have this opportunity this morning just to be in your house. Yes, we are so glad that God is here, and we know that God is right there with you. The presence of the Holy Spirit is in this place, and the presence of the Holy Spirit is in your house right now. We are so glad this opportunity that God gave to us, this technology, that we can be together. We miss you, but let's worship together this morning, and let's give him the best in your house. Whatever place you are, let's worship in Jesus' name. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. He bless you, Lord. Church, we're going to worship the Lord together. So I want you to get around your living room and just praise the Lord. We love you, Jesus. worship our king hallelujah come let us bow at his feet he has done great things yes. see what our savior has done see how his love overcomes he has done great things he has done great things you worship 
So Lord, we love you in this place. Oh, Jesus, we love you, church. Take a moment in your living room right there with your family. Raise your hands and worship the Lord together. Lift up your voice and praise. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we bless you.
Sometimes you don't see him working, but I want to give you this hope. I want to give you this word of hope. And I want to tell you this morning in your house, whatever you are, he is working and he's in God's control in Jesus' name. Because he is. He's the only one who can do it and he can do impossible things. I don't know if you feel the Holy Presence in your house, but we can feel here. And I would like if you can just to close your eyes for a second. And I would like to pray. And I would like to ask God to come right now in your house. To come right now in your room. To come right now in your heart. Because His presence can be right there. The same is here. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you for your presence. We say thank you, Lord, because even if you were quiet, even if you don't see, you are working. And we believe in you, Lord. We give all to you. We surrender ourselves to you. And we, Holy Spirit, come because you are more than welcome. Everything is in your hands. Everything is in control. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you so much. There is no better place than the place that we can come and worship together. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can you say amen there in your house? If you're free, you can give some shout to the Lord. And I hope you feel the same presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. I want you to keep looking. We had an idea this week to, co to put some uh, family videos for you to watch because we miss you. Our family church miss you. So check this out and uh, please stay there with us. Good morning, Brownsville family. This is Bobby and Erlene sending our greetings to you from our home to your home. We pray that God bless you during this time. We miss you. We look forward to the time when we can be together again and worship and praise. But we know that God has this all under his control. And we're just rejoicing in this, this Easter season as we rejoice in the resurrection. We just pray God's blessings upon you. Be at peace, knowing that he is in control. God bless you all. I just want to thank everyone who 
offered congratulations on our 50th wedding anniversary last week. I also want to let all the WM ladies know I miss you very much. I love you. I'm looking forward to the time when we can be together to fellowship and pray together again. As it is now, we can still lift each other up from our homes, and I'm so thankful that I know that. Hello, everybody. Sure do miss being together at the church. And I believe, you know, um, there's not going to be long and we'll be able to do that. But in the meantime, God is moving in such amazing ways with all the food distribution and opportunities for ministry that are presenting itself. So I just wanted to say hi and to remember what helps me to remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we don't live based on happiness, which depends on circumstances being good, and then we spiral down if they're not. But we always have the joy of the Lord because joy is Jesus. And um, so we can have joy because of him. He lives within our, within our heart. And he is in control, no matter how out of control and chaotic things may seem. Uh, he is still in control. And I just want to say hi, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, Brownsville. This is Gary and Brenda. Uh, we're here at our cabin in the Smokies. We're doing real good. We're staying isolated, and, but everything's working out good. We hope y'all all doing good. We miss you very much. Stay safe. Love you guys. Hi, everybody. Hello. We just wanted to tell the um, church family hello. Oh, Zoe says hello, too. We sure miss everyone. We miss going to church, but with us, it's a necessity. We need to stay home. So if you need to stay home, stay home, okay? We'll all get together soon, I hope. God bless and take care. God bless y'all. Bye. Oh. Hi. Hi. Hey. hey, Brownsville. We miss you. Pastor asked us to uh, make a video and tell you what we've been doing. Well, we've been here for over a week at home, trying to make sure everybody stays healthy and working from home. Um, we're bored to death. <laughs> um, we're watching movies and raking the yards and doing homework and um, trying not to kill each other. And we hope that you guys are successful at it as much as we are. Um, maybe even more. It would be hopeful to find out that somebody's doing it better than we are. Uh, but hopefully we'll see you soon. And the Lord will get us all through this. I'm really proud of Brownsville for doing the outreach that they have been doing. Those of you that can get to the church and uh, help feed the homeless and those that are hungry. Um, it's fantastic to watch it on Facebook. And we'll see you soon. God bless. Bye. Goodbye. Welcome back. We're so glad to have you with us. And again, I'm Evan Horton, the pastor here at Brownsville in uh, Pensacola, Florida. And so excited to have my dear friend and county commissioner, Lumen May. Commissioner, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Thank you, Pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be here and thankful that you would have me. How are you doing? I mean, I, I, I see you in press conferences. I see you running everywhere. I mean, you are working hard, but how are you? Are you holding up okay? <laughs> We're holding up, Pastor. Uh, we have been working on uh, not as near as hard as you, but uh, certainly whenever there's an epidemic or a pandemic and, and the people in need, I, I think that God requires of us as stewardship to engage and get on the front lines. And, and so we've been working hard. Uh, certainly uh, we had a, a scare in, in, in which we had been exposed uh, oh with the mayor. And uh, Are you okay? Praise God. Uh, we got our results back uh, wow. uh, not many hours ago. Uh, and the praise report is that uh, we're negative and, and we're thanking God for that. And so we know that we've been out in the community and uh, about shaking, uh, trying to do things uh, uh, to benefit those who may not have access or resources. And so we thank God for his blood of protection. What, what, what are you doing now? Like what's the state of things for us in the county? Uh, we just had a meeting. Uh, we're certainly following the, go the governor's orders. Uh, in terms of uh, non-essential businesses should be closed. Uh, at the county, we're still operating uh, at 100% capacity, uh, but no public is allowed in. Mm -hmm. We're doing everything through telephone, through emails, and so our buildings are shut down. We're 
keeping them sanitized. Uh, we're here, we're partnering uh, with you uh, in the uh, testing with community health uh, right here. Uh, when this epidemic first came out, uh, we realized that there were a, a lot of people who lacked insurance, who mm. didn't have the proper insurance, who didn't have the ability uh, to travel to the east side. And so we reached out to Sandra Smiley and Sandra Donaldson and to our healthcare professionals and to you uh, and to our sheriff department. And we were able to stand up very quickly uh, a um, testing site uh, here at the Brownsville uh, Church and in Brownsville Church and the Brownsville Community Center parking lot as mm -hmm. a partnership, which I thought was very important. And so uh, as we went on and learned from the first week that not everyone has a car. Uh, and so we've had to adjust. And so now we take walk-ups, which is odd and rare. There's nowhere else that's taking walk-ups outside. And so we've done that um, past, uh, with the help of you and your church. And let me just take a moment to thank you Mm. and this church and this congregation and, and, and the volunteers. I mean, last Saturday we were out feeding. Uh, Wednesday you were out feeding, and we're feeding children through our carry and go. Uh, but as I walked the line and, and saw the faces of the people and many that I represent in District 3, I saw how they were hurting. Uh, mm -hmm. And as they got their groceries in their bags, how a, a sigh of relief was put on their face. And so I want to thank you because, you know, not only our health care professionals and our, our medical executives, not only are they putting their life on the line and, and every day when they leave their families, but even the volunteers in, in the church congregation, your members who come out to help others, they're exposed. And once mm -hmm. you're exposed, I mean, you can find yourself on containment very quick or you could find yourself with the virus taking it back to your home. And so mm -hmm. I think all those who are serving in this time of need need to be be commended and I, I think that it's the God that is in them that protects them uh, from all, all harm and hurt and so we want to continue to pray uh, uh, but we want to also continue to be mindful mm -hmm. to be aware uh, that God can do anything but he gives us the intellect and the ability to decipher uh, those things that could be bad and one of the things I think that's important is what you're doing today at this church is that uh, you think it not robbery to have people to sit home and to be able to watch this on their computer, on their phone, and, and to not congregate because we do know that uh, the best protection is isolation at this point. That's, That's what right. the Center for Disease Control has said, that we should separate uh, physically not mm. socially and not spiritually. <laughs> socially and spiritually, we that's should right. continue to connect. Yep. And that's what this is about. And that's what you're doing. You're connecting people socially and spiritually, but you're physically keeping them in their homes. And for that, I commend you. Well, thank you, Commissioner. And I know we pray for you and uh, we are praying protection uh, for all of our feeding program. We uh, certainly observe all the guidelines and keeping the inside workers to tend and uh, masks and gloves and, and social distancing and all of that. And I remember talking to Sandra about the drive through and she said, well, we're not going to do walk up. And I said, you're going to miss a third of Brownsville because 32% don't have vehicles. <laughs> and uh, that's just crazy. So uh, I'm glad they changed that. And well, that and was really at important. At your suggestion. <laughs> I mean, and so, and, and literally, I mean, that's what happens, uh, Pastor. You and I are on the ground. You know, mm -hmm. it's not something that uh, I sit in a commissioner's chamber. Uh, every day, you know, you see me at this community right. center and the recommendations that I was making uh, to our executives and our healthcare executives is because I live this life. Uh, born and raised in District 3, love District 3, and I love the citizens that I get the chance to serve. And I just love this partnership that we've had uh, with you and with this church and with this uh, body of believers and, 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 and this community and, and the people. And more importantly, uh, Pastor Horton, the thing that should be recognized more importantly is that government can't do it alone. Elected right. officials can't do it alone. Uh, the church can't do it alone. Uh, we're all in this together, a That's collective right. body of people, or rather it be faith-based, uh, community uh, civil rights, uh, uh, politicians. Uh, this epidemic, this virus does not discriminate uh, based on who you are, mm -hmm. uh, the size of your uh, income or your education. Uh, this virus is sweeping not only Escambia County, the state, the nation, mm -hmm. and the world. And if there was one thing I could say today is that we must be prayerful, but we must be mindful. That's right. And we must be smart and we must make the decisions. And those epidemiologists, our, our outside hygienists, our researchers, our scientists, uh, God has given giving them the training and the intellect to make recommendations that we That's should right. adhere to uh, because this is very serious and we don't want to be a New Orleans or a yeah. New York. And so we're learning about some of the things that happen in those uh, metropolitan and highly populated areas. And so I think some of the things that leadership, myself and the mayor getting out front, uh, we have been able to not level, not eliminate it, but at least slow it down and keep our numbers uh, to a, a, a controlling uh, number. And uh, unfortunately, Mr. 
uh, Pastor, we've not hit the peak. And yeah, so, so. The, the peak is coming. Uh, but with God with us, we're going to withstand this. And we're going to come out of this on the other side. Amen. We're going to come out on the other side better than we were before. And, uh, you know, as I said to some business owners last week, uh, I, can, I can always earn revenue. I can bring back money. I can bring back economy. The thing I can't bring back is a life. Mm -hmm. And so the most important thing that I'm doing as a commissioner is trying to put in measures that protect the lives That's of the good. citizens of Escambia County. That is so good. People have been self-quarantining uh, and uh, uh, sheltering in place now for a couple of weeks. We've got the month of April to go. And uh, people are getting a little stir-crazy, getting a little depressed, concerned, uh, a little bit of fear, which I don't want to see. But would you just talk to that camera and talk to those that are watching and just give a word of encouragement as how you see it and what we need to be doing now. Thank you, Pastor. And we certainly understand that this virus is not only striking the physical health, but it's the mental health. It's the social health. And so what I do encourage, as we've said, social distancing uh, is not exactly the word that I would use. I would say physical distancing, mm -hmm. uh, where you separate. Uh, you don't have to go to someone's home to tell them that you love them, but you can pick up the phone. And this technology that we have today, uh, you can call your aunt. You can call the senior members of this church. Uh, you can write them a letter and have the letter mailed. You can give them a text message. You can drop a goodie bag off and leave it at the front door and call them and let them know that someone is thinking about them. And so uh, although we are encouraging uh, isolation and separation, separation. We are encouraging uh, people to check on each other. Uh, we are our brother's keepers. We are our sister's keeper. Uh, the seniors in our community, the seniors in our church, they need us more than ever. And most importantly, our children, uh, they have not been confined to their household uh, in their lifetime. They've never experienced a pandemic like this. And so they are, they are anxious to get outside. They're anxious to go to the park and, and engage with their friends, but encourage them for not only their safety, but for the safety of their grandmother, the safety of their mother, that they should too stay isolated, stay in a home. Uh, it's not saying that you can't go out, walk around the block. We just say that please don't congregate. Uh, and when you get in a group of 10 or less, at least stay six feet apart. Uh, because this virus, uh, there's so many things, Pastor, that now we don't absolutely know everything about it, whether it's through droplets or whether it's through air. Uh, as we see, our epidemiologists and our scientists uh, daily are coming back with different reports. But uh, I do believe the report of the Lord, but I do believe that by faith, we're made whole, but we also have to be mindful of things that are happening in our daily life and to protect each other. All I can say is amen to that. I'm with you 100%. Thank you, Commissioner May. You're a blessing to the county and a blessing to me and to the people of Brownsville Church. And we're going to continue to pray for you. Thank you. Uh, Pastor, as we go off, uh, we do need the prayers. The prayers of all uh, can help us. I mean, throughout this country, I know this broadcast goes worldwide. And uh, right here in Escambia County, Pensacola, Florida, and one of the most historic neighborhoods in the state of Florida, and probably what people would say, uh, one of the poorest neighborhoods in, in, in the state of Florida. Uh, we're seeking your prayers. Amen. So, Father, we pray right now, and I ask in the name of Jesus that you would protect our commissioner, protect our county, watch over us, and, Lord, we just bind this virus now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we ask for us to deliver us, keep us healthy and safe, and we aren't fearful, but let us be mindful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. and praise God. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Pastor. Obviously, that part and interview with uh, Commissioner May was pre-recorded, and we appreciate his time. He's so busy. And again, just as we said, remember him in your prayers. He's working hard to keep us all safe, and he has a real heart for Brownsville. And uh, the greetings from our church family were wonderful, and uh, thank you so much for sending those in. And if you're part of the Brownsville Church, or even if you're watching from someplace else, send us a 20-second or 30-second uh, clip of your hello, and we'll try to get that out as well, and appreciate uh, you keeping in touch with us. Um, it's hard to believe today's Palm Sunday and uh, celebrating in a week Easter, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But um, just good to be here together and sharing with one another. And Carlos, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Yes, it's so good to be pastor here and knowing like what God is doing here right now, and so good to be part involved with this. So if somebody has a prayer request, how do they send that in? Well, in our website as well, you can see there is a prayer uh, space that you can write us down and you can uh, send us email and also uh, on Facebook also you can put your comment in your prayer and I always say pastor feel free during the week send us an email or message us let's be connected so we want to be praying for you we want to be with you and please 
uh, write us and that uh, we are going to be reading here. We are going to be together and praying to have this interactivity. That's so good. And then if they want to give, and we appreciate everyone who is giving and being faithful in your tithes and offerings, uh, that's how we can keep going. And all of our staff are still working. We haven't laid anybody off and just appreciate it so much. How do they give? Yeah, so brownsville.church slash give. Uh, you can give there as well. If you are on our website, you're going to see on the top right, there's a button you can click give. As well, if you're on Facebook, there's a number you can see on the screen right now. You can text and give. It's safe and secure. And uh, also, if you want to, you can make your check payable to BAG and mail to us. There is our address all your information and pastor like pastor said we really appreciate your help on this season and uh we, god bless you very very much and uh elizabeth is our children's pastor and you're active there on the computer chatting and interacting with everybody and just appreciate everybody getting involved and being part of this and uh ben the worship earlier wow yes the presence of the lord is here and i pray it translates over into your home as well that is so good and we're going to be uh doing another song here for palm sunday in just a few minutes and uh, Valerie and Mary, May, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Long time member of Brownsville and being part of us. Mary, how are you doing? Got to hold that mic up nice and close to your chin there. There you go. I just appreciate you coming. How are you doing through all this, Mary? I'm doing pretty good. Are you? Yes, God is good. You're just staying at home? Yes, inside. Except <laughs> for this. Except for this. <laughs> and uh, that's a little adventurous, and I know you're a little nervous about that, but... I just want to say thank you for coming and getting out for this. What you're you're a prayer intercessor. You you're a prayer warrior. I know that. How how do you what's going on in your prayer life right now? What are you hearing from the Lord? What are you sensing in the spirit? Just keeping at it. What's going on? Well, he's there with me. I know. <laughs> yes. And he's been my help, really. Because I have had some times with my legs and such a things like that. But he's been there for me. That is so yes. good. Yes. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. No one like him. No one. Amen. Yes. Valerie, how are you doing through this? What's what's happening for you? You're on the board here at the church. You're working full time, trying to take care of your mom. I mean, you're mm -hmm. things have really been still busy. Well, yes. I haven't felt the slowness that people have said that they are that this is experiencing or that this is creating. Yeah, I haven't had uh, that yet either. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's been a different experience working from home um, right now. My um, job is allowing us to do that, of course, um, being safe. We're a financial institution that requires us to still be open to help the people. Um, so working from home is just strange for me because um, my, me and my mom live together. So sometimes when I'm talking, um, my conference call, she said, huh, huh? <laughs> uh, I said, well, well, I'm working, Mom, I'm working. And I've found the same experience with her, too. I hear her talking. I'm like, okay, is she talking to me or is she not? But it's been um, a challenge to, as a leader in the company, to connect with the people on my team, to make sure I'm, I'm engaged with them. Yeah. To, but we have electronics. We have the technology to do so. So that's what we've been taking advantage wow. of. And, and, and scripture, is there any particular passage that's striking home for you right now and that's really hitting you? The Lord, um, 27, uh, Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light, my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, whom shall I be afraid? I'm being realistic about what to do, but I'm not fearing. Yes, we have that tinge, we're human, but these are scriptures that are foundations that now we've got to take advantage of and say, let me trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let me know, let me really believe that he is my strength. Yeah. He is my life. And I shall not be afraid of coronavirus or anything else. Amen. Yeah, and that, that, that light, that peace, that strength, it's an inside, not an outside peace. Absolutely, absolutely. Like that. that is awesome. Um, I want us to pray for those that have sent in prayer requests and pray for our church family and those of you that are watching and seeing this and, and Valerie would you lead us in prayer and just pray for the church uh, we have a lot of other people even in different countries watching and nations um, if you could I, I looked uh, I heard, got a report that we even had a couple in Switzerland watching a couple weeks ago and so uh, just just pray for us and lead us in prayer if you would father in the name of Jesus we trust your grace and power Lord throughout this trying time 
we thank you that you are greater. You are the greatest, Lord. Lord, I pray for those that are in need right now, those who are being touched, Lord, by this virus or family members or even just the fear of it, Lord. I pray that you would send your power through this darkness, that you would send your light, that you would send your grace, that you would send your comfort, that you would be Lord of all in their lives, so that when this is all over, they can look back and say, if it wasn't for the Lord on our side, what would we have done? We pray for your divine protection. In Jesus' name, for all those that are church members throughout the world that are listening and are seeing this broadcast, and we trust it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, Elizabeth, we talked about being Palm Sunday, and just doesn't feel right to not have kids here with their palms. <laughs> That's hard. And uh, but let's just sing and worship together. Ben, would you lead us in this song? Hosanna in the
still oil in that song as Eddie James says absolutely yeah <laughs> so good well this has been a wild week and uh, I just want to say right now to everybody behind camera thank you for all your hard work the hours and uh, just all the time we've had some technical glitches and figuring that out and making sure everything works and it's just been incredible and as I shared uh, Wednesday, we got a call Tuesday night from Farm Share, Tuesday afternoon late. And they said, uh, we've got some strawberries and bananas we need to get rid of. Would you be open to a Farm Share truck this week? I said, sure. And I said, when? And they said, tomorrow. I said, okay. <laughs> so at 7 a.m. when Tuesday morning, a 18-wheeler arrived with a Farm Share truckload of groceries. And we got 38,000 pounds. Four pallets of strawberries, four pallets of bananas, four pallets of cases of Dasani water. I mean, it just went on. A case, a pallet of lettuce, three pallets full of frozen food of everything you could imagine in it, including great big turkeys that you'd have for Easter. I mean, it was just mm. incredible. And uh, someone said, how are we going to get rid of it? I said, just wait. And sure <laughs> enough, within an hour and a half, we had traffic 10 blocks. We gave it all away. By 11 o'clock, 38,000 pounds of groceries were gone. Wow. That's good. And then at 3 o'clock, we had five vehicles or four vehicles up at the warehouse for Feeding America and picked up another 9,000 pounds of groceries. The volunteers came and stayed, 10 of them only, in the reception hall and bagged up the groceries and got them ready and gave them out uh, Wednesday morning. And um, Elizabeth, you were there, I think, what, within about an hour, hour and a half. It was all gone again. In fact, traffic was so backed up, they were out on Highway 90, and the deputy sheriffs came and said, you can't block traffic on a state highway. We weren't expecting this many. So today we actually had uh, Charles Mitchell in his state trooper car in uniform and, and uh, had Gene Carter out there with his orange vest directing traffic and getting him down uh, Y Street towards Avery, and that helped a lot. And uh, they got it all done, and they got traffic taken care of. Uh, Friday they got uh, another load of groceries, and uh, then Saturday we delivered or gave out and distributed another 7,000 pounds of groceries. So 7, 9, 16, so what, 54,000 pounds of groceries wow. this week alone. And uh, what an amazing thing. And I just praise God for that and the provision. Commissioner May actually asked me before we shared the interview and talked about uh, what's happening in the county. He said, now, how much does the church pay for all those groceries? I said, you know what, they're all donated. We don't pay anything. In fact, we pick up, pick up a, from a number of grocery stores as well. And uh, Dennis has a crew, then he goes out and picks them up. And we get all these big goods of day-old goods. And, I mean, it's just incredible. So we, we have that food, and we're feeding Brownsville. Someone actually called on Tuesday to get rid of the Farm Share Groceries, a news station. And, and I said, please don't call because we, we don't necessarily need to do that. Plus, I want people in Brownsville to get the groceries and get the help that they need. And so it's just been a blessing. Now let me talk about what's happening. Um, this is Palm Sunday, Wednesday at 7 o'clock. I'm going to do Wednesday in the Word. And uh, that's going to be a, a great uh, time of teaching together and sharing about Holy Week. And every day, in fact, I'm rereading uh, the book by Bob Acock called Eight Days That Changed the World. Uh, from Palm Sunday to Easter. And I'm going to walk through that week in a Bible study on the Wednesday at 7 p.m. Good Friday, April the 10th, uh, we are going to have communion together for a Good Friday service at 7 p.m. again. And then Saturday at 7 a.m., we have another truck coming from Farm Share. So we're going to do groceries on Wednesday from Feeding America, probably seven to 10,000 pounds again. 
And then on Saturday, we will have a farm share truck plus the groceries we pick up on Friday. And on April 11th, we'll have groceries again that we're going to give out and have that ready. So we start at 7. We start bagging, getting everything ready and staged. And as soon as we're ready, we'll open the lines for walk-up as well as drive-through. And uh, we're maintaining all of the, the distancing. And I like what Lumen said, not social distancing, because we're still going to stay engaged online and through technology, but physical distancing. And so mm -hmm. we're going to maintain that and uh, we're going to adhere to those guidelines. But we're going to do groceries and farm share on Saturday. And so come and receive groceries if you're hungry and need help. Sunday, Easter Sunday, April 12th, going to be incredible. Uh, we are doing a drive-in church. I love that. Yeah. And Ben, you're going to have full worship band out yes. on the steps. Yes, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're it is going to be good. So we're going to have one section for the worship team, another one for our bikes. We have 20 bikes we're giving away. And uh, you can enter to give to get a bike. And how, how do they do that, Carlos? What yeah. do they do? Uh, Pastor, they share our videos like we've been posting uh, videos on Wednesdays and, and Sundays. So uh, you share your video and you're going to be entering in. And the more you share, more you have uh, a chance to win a, a new, brand new bike that Walmart do wait, uh, donate for us. Mm -hmm. So it's brand, brand new bike. And uh, come on, let's share. So even if you're a grandparent and you don't need a bike, but your grandchild does, these are bikes for kids fifth grade and under. And you can come and get a bike and be part of that and enter to win to give your grandchild a bike. I think that's amazing. I think that'll be incredible. And just want to encourage you to enter to be part of that. Uh, we're going to be giving those away. We have an FM transmitter. So you pull into the parking lot. We'll have parking attendants showing you where to park, facing the main uh, doors. We won't be parking parallel to the sanctuary, parking towards it, perpendicular. And uh, we'll have you there. But you can turn your, we'll give you a worship guide. And uh, you'll have there the FM radio station to tune in your car. Uh, we will have a sound system outside as well. Uh, if we do have some walk-ups, we're going to maintain six feet dis uh, distancing as well for that. That. But we're going to be ready for you to come Easter Sunday to church. And we'll be broadcasting it live on Facebook and be able to watch and participate and be part of the service if you can't get here. But just encouraging everybody to be together. And even though we can't sit in the pews together, we can sit in our cars together. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be a great day. We talked about water baptisms. No, we're not doing that. Uh, we just don't need to be spreading uh, coronavirus through water and dunking people in the same tank. <laughs> we just don't need that risk, and I'd feel awful if that happened. So we're not going to be able to do that part, but everything else, because he is risen, he is risen indeed, and we want you to be part of it. And it's going to be a good, good service together. Uh, so let, let's just talk about Palm Sunday for a minute. And I want to share with you a word here that I think would be encouraging to you. And as I said, uh, great book by Bob, by Dan Acock, not Bob, Dan Acock, called Eight Days That Changed the World. And they begin on Palm Sunday as the first day, and it finishes on Easter. Now there's just a little history in Scripture in understanding the Gospels, of course, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, the first three are very similar, so we call those the synoptic Gospels because they're similar, but John's Gospel is different. John, the, the first three Gospels, they look at things from an objective perspective, kind of historically and chronologically. John kind of does it from an object, from a subjective view. He shares his feelings, his thoughts. He goes into great detail. And he spends a lot of time on that week. And so we're going to share this together, and we're going to talk about that in our Wednesday in the Word on Wednesday, and then Good Friday, and then, of course, finishing on Easter Sunday. But the first day of eight days that changed the world, it's Palm Sunday. And people are getting ready for the Passover. Now, you have to understand the Passover. It's, it's an incredible uh, feast and celebration of the Israelites. And if at all possible, you got to Jerusalem to do that. And Jerusalem would swell in population five, sometimes ten times the number. Every room, every inn, every square spot, people would camp out. It would be packed in the city and outside the walls of the city. And everyone's there for one purpose, and that's to celebrate what God had done in bringing the children of Israel out of slavery and into the promised land. And it's just an incredible time of celebration. Well, they're all there for this. Jesus is going to come to Jerusalem that Sunday, that first day. And so they stayed with friends in Bethany, and you have to understand there's Jerusalem, the Kidron Valley, and then on the other side is the Mount of Olives. And if you're on the Mount of Olives, you see those pictures of the city of Jerusalem with the walls and the Dome of the Rock. 
that's taken from the Mount of Olives. And at just down the hill of the Mount of Olives is the Garden of Gethsemane, and then you go up the other side and into Jerusalem, the old city. Well, as you head from Mount of Olives, just about a mile and a half, you come to a small village called Bethany. And that's where Mary and Martha and Lazarus lived. And it's believed that that's where Jesus was on the Saturday night before Palm Sunday. So he and his disciples start heading towards the Mount of Olives. And he gets onto a donkey and he's ready to head into the city. Now what happens is amazing. In the midst of this, as he starts coming and heading down that road from the Mount of Olives to the Garden of Gethsemane and then up into the city of Jerusalem, all the people crowded around ready for Passover see him coming. Now word has already spread that there's this rabbi, there's this teacher named Yeshua, Jesus, and that he is the one that walks on water. He is the one that makes the blind to see. He is the one that causes the leper to be cleansed. He is the one that fed 5,000 with five loaves. I mean, word has spread all over the land, and now they're all gathered together in this one place at the city of Jerusalem, and he's coming down the hill, and word of mouth starts spreading. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And they start shouting, and they start proclaiming, and they start declaring, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. A prophecy from Zechariah that he will come on a donkey. And here he is riding on this donkey, fulfilling the messianic prophecy of the Old Testament. The excitement builds, and they are getting so excited. They want to do something. They want to honor this man coming, this king. So they grab their coats. They grab their bedrolls, and quite often you have an undergarment of a shirt and pants, and, and you take that outer cloak off to sleep on it as a bedroll at night. And they took those outer cloaks, and they would lay them down in front of the donkey for him to walk on. Not because the donkey needed something soft, but it was in honor and homage and saying, this is the one. This is the Messiah. I mean, everybody wants to see. Everybody wants to be a part. And then they don't have their cloaks, or some people had already laid them, they want to do more. So they grab palm branches. And if you see any of the series on Rome the, and the triumph of Rome, and a general would come back to Rome after a triumph, and Caesar would declare that this general for his victories would get a triumph. That's where we get our word triumphal entry. For that triumph coming into the city of Rome, they would grab the palms, and they aren't the little ones that we wave in our hands today. They are six-foot branches, eight-foot branches. And they would pound them on the ground as people would come by, and it would be a thunderous roar. I want to tell you a story, a personal story. I was about 11 years old, living in Toronto, Canada. And my dad was asked to be an evangelist for a camp on the West Coast in Seattle, Washington. And so we had this little pop-up camper tent trailer where you moved out the sides and they made beds and there's a little kitchen in the middle and the top pops up and you have a little kitchen and a place to sleep. And I have three brothers, one older, two younger. And so the four of us, four boys and my mom and dad, we got into the car and hooked up the tent trailer and he said, we're going to camp across Canada and head to Seattle for this camp meeting my dad was the speaker and then we're going to drive back again so we're traveling across Canada in the summer and we stop and camp out in Saskatoon Saskatchewan <laughs> now you may not know where Saskatoon Saskatchewan is Ben do you know where Saskatoon you know well I'll give you a hint it's right next door to Moose Jaw Saskatchewan did you know that <laughs> yeah you go. now you know yeah yeah <laughs> So we're camping in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and there's a picnic table in the campsite where we're there, and my mom has the Coleman stove, and we're, we're having breakfast together, and my dad's sitting in a, a, a lawn chair reading the paper for that morning of Saskatoon, and, and he reads in there that that day, that morning, I think about noon, I guess, the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, was going to be in Saskatoon unveiling a plaque for something or other and uh, having it there in the city. And my mom's a huge royal fan. And so my dad said to my mom, this is what's happening. He said, want to go? 
I didn't have to ask her twice. Yes, we're going to go. That's amazing. That's incredible. So we pack up, and we're going to decide to camp there one more night so we can go see the queen. So we left the tent trailer there, and we drive over to the area in Saskatoon where this event's going to happen. We got there probably about 9, 10 o'clock. And noon, she's supposed to be there. And we get there, and we walk up, and there's this red carpet, and there's these railings along the carpet, and at the end of the red carpet is the plaque, and there's a curtain across in front of the plaque. And it's about 100, 150 feet from the road where the queen's going to stop, and they have that part blocked off. My family finds a spot. There are already quite a few people there waiting and getting a good spot to watch and see the queen. And I get there, and I realize there's a spot up here that nobody's really at, and it's right next to the plaque. So I get right up there and push past everybody I could and get right to the front of the line, and I'm right there in front where the plaque is, where the queen's going to be. I thought, I got the best spot in the whole place to see the queen. It's about quarter to 12, and the queen's going to arrive in 15 minutes. And uh, a officer, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the federal law enforcement for Canada, comes and taps me on the shoulder and goes, hey, kid, this is for press only. I go, what? Yeah, this is for press only. I go, well, where am I supposed to stand? He said, I don't know, but you can't stand here. I go, great. So I get, well, by now, it's packed, and there's 15, 20 deep, and there's no place for me to go. I can't, I'm not going to see the queen. I'm really upset. So I, I'm standing back behind the crowd and I'm leaning against a tree and I'm looking up and I see there's this branch on the tree that I'm leaning on that goes right out over top of people. <laughs> you got it. You already know where I'm going. <laughs> I climb the tree, shinning out onto the branch, and I'm going right out over top of everybody till now I am hanging right over where the queen's going to walk. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Unbelievable. So... The queen arrives. Nobody, I mean, now I'm sure they say, get out and get out of there. You're a security risk. I'm 11 years old. Anyway, the queen arrives. She starts walking up the red carpet. Now, you got to understand the Canadians, very reserved. Now, some of you watching from Canada are going to be upset with me for this, but, you know, the queen's coming. They're just doing this. Not me. I'm 11, <laughs> and I am a second child, second born. And the queen gets to within about three or four feet from where I'm at, and I hang on with one arm, and I lean over and I go, Hey, Queenie, I'm up here! Hey, Queenie! <laughs> and she's walking, and she hears me, and she does this. I got a personal audience with the queen. I really did. It was amazing. I can't imagine the feeling that I would have on that road from the Mount of Olives to Jerusalem, seeing not just the queen, not just the king, mm -hmm. but the king of kings and the Come Lord on, of Pastor. lords. That's good. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. The word says someday we'll see him face to face. Our king, our Lord, our savior. You know, you know the story of the Palm Sunday, the scribes and the Pharisees, they get really upset. And they, they say, tell your disciples, tell them to stop this yelling. And he says, look it, if they don't yell, if they don't declare, these rocks will cry out. Mm -hmm. Fulfilled another prophecy, actually. He gets to Palm Sunday, the rest of the week unfolds. And of course, he's arrested. And he goes before Pilate. And Pilate says, are you the king of the Jews? And he says, yeah, I am. And he said, but my kingdom's not of this world. In other words, I'm not a threat to you. I'm not a threat to your government. My kingdom's bigger than that. You know, our God's bigger than all of the things we're worried about right now. He is king of kings and Lord of lords. So Pilate, as you know, and we'll talk about this Good Friday, he said, I don't find any fault. I don't find any issues at all. And so he wants to release him, but they cheer, give us Barabbas instead. And so he releases Barabbas and he condemns Jesus to die. And when you're led from the court to the execution place, Golgotha, you carry your crime on a placard and he carries his crime on a placard in three languages Latin the language of authority Greek the language of society Hebrew the language of the Israelites God's people 
So in all three arenas, we know He is the King of the Jews. Mm -hmm. We have a person in our congregation, and Rich, if you're watching, I appreciate you sharing this with me, but he says in Hebrew, King of the Jews, you take the first letter of each word. I don't know if you know this, it spells Yahweh. The acrostic is so clear, so significant. It's above him. It's put on above him and saying, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's, it's powerful. It's amazing. And I want to share something with you in closing that I've shared here before, but I cannot get over it that this is a Palm Sunday word for us. On Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry, King of kings and Lord of lords. Evie Hill, senior, former senior pastor of Mount Zion, Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles, California. He said this, it's simply called, That's My King. So I want to read this to you. The Bible says, My King is the King of the Jews. He is the King of Israel, the King of righteousness, the King of the ages, the King of heaven, the King of glory, and the King of kings, and He's the Lord of lords. That's my King. Do you know Him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's importantly graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's the sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He has the highest personality in philosophy. He's fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the savior, the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him. He supplied strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted. He sympathizes and saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. He beautifies the meager. I wonder, do you know him? He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. And I would, if I could, describe him to you because he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off your hand. You can't outlive him. You can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him. They found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. And death couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. Hallelujah. My king. My king and your king. That's all I want to say today. He's our king. He's our Lord. He's our savior. Let's sing it again, Ben. It's such a powerful song. Let's sing it before we pray. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. be lifted higher. Oh, we lift you up, Lord. Higher. Be lifted higher. Let our King be lifted 
Now one more time, everybody say, Hosanna in the highest. Let our King be lifted up. Let our King, let our King be lifted up. You are my king. You are our king. For anyone watching right now that's not walking with you, I pray that they would whisper the name of Jesus right now and invite you into their lives. Whether they've ever done it before, it's been a long time, or have never, right now just say his name, Jesus. You call on his name, and the Bible says he will answer. So I pray right now that you would come into everyone's home, wherever they're watching right now, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ will enter into that place. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, thank you that he is our King of Kings. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be together with our church family and those watching from all over the world. And I ask your blessing upon them right now, your protection. I plead the blood of Christ over them. I take authority over any sickness and disease and bind it in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I loose a spirit of health and wholeness into that house and home, into every person watching. And I thank you for this time and for your anointing that's here in this house. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. And as I've said from the very beginning, let's not be fearful, but let's be careful.